let's stand to pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we are so thankful for today and your grace and your mercy. Father, as we come together to worship you, may our heart be turned to you. May Christ Jesus, our Lord, be the center of our worship. May the message be so clear to our mind as it will be nailed in our heart, and our life will change. Father, only you are God, and there is no other God, and we cry out to you, Lord, because we need you, Lord. We need to know you. We need to be sanctified. We need, we need to be set free from our own flesh on such a way that we glorify you with everything that we do. For because only, only you, to, to you only, be glory for eternity. Amen. As we are still standing, let's read God's word. Please open up your Bible in Matthew 1. And you have a Bible in front of you if you need. And it's a Bible in, in, in uh, English and it's in Portuguese and Spanish. The black one is in English. So you can open up the Bible in Matthew 1 if you have a hard time. We have people next to you that can help you to find in the Bible. And we're going to be read for now the verse 23. Matthew 1, verse 23. And he says, The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. You may be seated. It's Christmas time, and we are celebrating the Christmas for this whole month of December, preparing our hearts for the 25th, that is, a, that is coming around the corner next week. We'll be celebrating a beautiful service to the Lord on, on, on the Lord's Day in the morning, on Sunday morning, which is, uh, the, um, again, the 25th when we celebrate Christmas. We don't know exactly the date. Um, years ago, people thought that was wrong and it was supposed to be in the spring, and uh, more, more recent studies says that it's possible, it's a very good possibility that it has to ha that happen in December. But it doesn't matter, what really matters is that we have a time, we set a time in the year to celebrate the birth of, our, of, of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not about the date, it's about the celebration, it's not about, to, as it's not about our lives, it's about Christ being the center of our lives. It's about even changing the history of humanity, and He changed our lives, and He saved us. For His glory. And if you are with us today, and you not have that experience in your heart, if you're not saved, and you, or maybe you don't know if you're saved, I just hope that the Holy Spirit will work in your life on a way that He can show you Christ, and you may be saved as well. Our, our, we depend on the Lord. We depend on this salvation for eternity. As, it's, as, it's, it, is, as it is Christmas time, we're going to sing some Christmas hymns, and we're going to sing to the Lord. So please join us. The lyrics will be passing. Oh, already there. That was, that was quick. And the lyrics will be there. So please sing, stand and sing. Sing to the Lord with joy. It's Christmas time. Angels we have heard on high. It's a classic. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing were the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Excelsis Deo, 
angels we have heard on high sweetly sweetly through the night and the mountains in reply echoing their brief the light Gloria in excelsis Deo. Yes. 
holy night. Holy night. So beautiful when we can sing to the Lord those hymns and uh, we usually sing them on a during Christmas but they actually it's so much true on them that we should remember them and uh, not only not only on Christmas we know the center of the of Christmas is Christ I think the word in English is very clear we call it Christmas Amen. Christ, from the, where, the, where comes the word uh, or the idea of um, um, religious service of Christ, Christmas. So may we remember those, um, those that important, the importance of Christmas. The every year, but this time, this time that is coming around, I'm trying to get some time. It was a little noise on, on the room, but as we we come as we come to this special time in the year that is Christmas, and it is about the, the the celebration of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. May that come to our hearts and minds on on, on such a way that we will actually celebrate the birthday, right? The the, the beautiful, uh, uh, the beauty of the birth of Christ, and not just a party or something that comes and goes. And uh, for a time, we, we we decorate our house. We have a lot of work. Right? Right? We, we spend a lot of money actually, we, we buy presents and we do a lot of things just because we have to celebrate. Or we run around on, on Christmas parties and go here and there. And sometimes we miss the focus and miss the purpose of what Christmas should be. Christmas is the celebrate of Christ. It's, it's the birth of Christ that we celebrate Jesus, the baby they're, they're born and why did he came and that's what we should focus on. Why did he came? And he was God. He was, he is, and he will be God forever. He is the king. And he came to save people, save his people from their own sins. And that's what the message shows today. We have been studying for the five uh, Lord's Day, five Sundays. We're going to be studying the angels in the first Christmas. And today, we're going to be studying on Joseph. We uh, start with Zechariah in the, in the first uh, uh, Lord's Day uh, of the month of December. And then last week we studied on Mary and how the angel came to Mary and the message. And today we're going to see wha what was the message that the angel br brought to Joseph in dreams. It was a little different than Zechariah and Maria. With Zechariah and Maria, the angel actually showed up there. So he was physically there. That's what we understand from the text. Uh, on Joseph was in a dream. But the angel came and gave him a message. Just giving a little bit of a background. Uh, and then you can check those messages on YouTube if you want it. Later on on Facebook or, or some on audio. On the first time, on the first message we saw that Zechariah, he did not believe. And because he did not believe, he was unable to speak until that happened. And back then we said that our unbelief don't, doesn't, don't, our unbelief stop us from talking about the great things that God has done. Because He put us on a position of our unbelief that stops us from, from being what God wants us to be. And a lot of times our life is empty. 
Even that we, we may say, oh, I know the Lord. We may say, I know scriptures. But sometimes our life is empty of something. And it's, it's not what it should be. We don't leave the full of the gospel as we should. Because we don't believe a lot of things. Even then we know they exist. Because it's very different than knowing that Jesus is uh, uh, the Lord. Than having Jesus as a Lord. This is a very different thing. A lot of everybody in the United States knows about Jesus. I don't think it could be not even one person. They never heard about Jesus. But He's not the Lord of everyone. He's not the Savior of everyone. He rules over all. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. But a lot of people do not believe in Him. And because they do not believe in Him, they can talk about everything. And they cannot speak about Jesus. They're not enthusiastic about Christmas as they should be. The beauty of Christmas is not the decorations, the presents. It's not the, 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 the celebration on the 25th. It's actually that Christ was born. That's what it is. And you see a lot of people, they go around and the towns are decorated and you, you, the stores are, are inviting you to come and spend all the money that you have and the one that you don't have, that you're going to be paying in January. But it's like calling you in, but even if you go to, to, for coffee, you have a, a, a cup that you've got to put in the garbage that has something about Christmas. But that means, is Christ the center? No. So what are our unbelief a lot of times stops, stops us from celebrating what Christmas is. So that was the first message in Zechariah. So last week we spoke about Mary and how Mary had a plan. She was she had every, everything figured out. She was uh, engaged with this man and she was about to have a family. Everything was according to plan. She was doing everything as, as she should, should be doing. And then the angel came and says, Listen, you will be... Uh, uh, there is a child coming. And she said, well, I, I don't know, no, I don't know no man. And she said, well, that child is the Savior. And she said, all right, I'm just a servant of the Lord, just may His will be done. And this young lady, she turned from her own plan to what God was telling her to do through the message of the angel. And we learn about obedience. Today, with Joseph, we're going to learn about obedience, but on a, very, on a little different way. When this man, he turned away from his own plan, which was a plan that he, he looked right to his own eyes, but it was not what God had for him to do. So please open your Bible on Matthew 1. And if you don't have a Bible, there's a Bible right in front of you. You have a Bible in English, Spanish, and in Portuguese, the black one is in English. Matthew 1, if you have a trouble finding in the Bible, you have somebody next to you that can help you. Matthew 1, we're going to read from verse 18 all the way to verse 24. 25, sorry, to verse 25. And um, so Matthew 1, verses 18 to verse 25. As you find, please stand for God's word. Amen. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother, Mary, was uh, pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to, to be with the child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quickly, quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because you will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will uh, give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, to, and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Let's pray. Father, 
We come before you in the name of Jesus and we ask you, Lord, please help us to understand your message. May your word be spoken today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So we know the story, right? It's a beautiful story. I think everybody knows, I think everybody is familiar. So Joseph, uh, he uh, was engaged. That will be the word. Um, there is no dating in scriptures, okay? Be careful with that dating thing that the world um, came up with. There was no dating in scriptures. There, he was engaged. So he was engaged with this young lady, and um, everything was figured out, everything was okay, and then he find out that this um, young lady that he was supposed to marry, was already engaged, was pregnant. Well, not a nice thing to find out. And the Bible says that he, what he did, and I want to read what it says, look at verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, or to be an, to ready to be a husband, was a righteous man. So because he was a righteous man, not because he was a coward, not because he wanted to get away with it, not because he was trying to find the easiest way, and I ask you, please try to understand back in times, not like today, not the society that we live today. Not there was no sin back there, there was sin back there. But today, we are very comfortable with everybody's sin. That's not what happening in those times. It was, it was very different. So society will consider this as a big, big problem. So Joseph was a righteous man and he was trying to make it less, if we can say that, a little better. So because he was a righteous man, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. So this man was concerned with Mary. He was not trying to find the easiest way, the getaway, you know, like maybe if I just go away, this is going to be better for me, this is going to look so bad to me. No, actually, if he was coming to expose what actually happened to the eyes of society, not what actually happened to the eyes of the Lord, it will be better for him, it will be easier for him to get away. Oh, look what she did. I have nothing to do with that. She's pregnant. I have nothing to do with that. But what the Bible says, because he was a, was, a very, was a righteous man, he wants to make it, doesn't look so bad to her, so what he did, he decided to walk away, decide to leave her, they'll be not exposing her to public disgrace. He had this plan that to his own eyes was actually a good plan. To his own eyes was a plan that actually make it everything better, especially for Mary. That was always his, his understanding. I, I know no, for today's days, it's hard for us to understand what I just exposed from the scripture, but that's exactly what the text said, and that's what was better back on the days. So it's a totally different idea. A lot of people think of this as, oh, he was a coward. He don't want to deal with the problem. That's not what he was. He was a righteous man, and he was trying to make things a little better. So this man had a plan to his own eyes and to the eyes of society will be the best plan. Did you ever have an idea and you said this is the best idea ever? Did you ever come up with something and you said like, you know what, if I do this way, this is going to be awesome. It's going to work. And it's right. I'm not talking about sinning. I'm not talking about doing something that is, that is bad, that you know it's a sin. It's when he... He's doing when you do something and you make a decision and you think of something that is actually looks right. He probably was thinking, oh, I will be pleasing the Lord if I do this way. This is the best that I can do for Mary. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure how this worked. But I'm going to do this. This is what he has in his mind before the angel came. And on a dream, the Bible says, an angel came, an angel from the Lord came to him on a dream. And, and that's what the difference is from the others from last week and the week before. The Bible says, after he, consider, he had considered, verse 20, this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel said this, Joseph, son of David, do not afraid to take Mary as your wife. So in a dream, he saw this angel, and the angel said, uh, uh, Joseph, don't be afraid to have Mary as your own wife. It's fine. You're going you're gonna to be fine. And he goes like, how that's going to be fine? So, 
how? And then he said, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. He goes like, oh, okay, I got it. Oh, of course, I know a million cases like that, right? It happens every day. Of course, of course. thank you. No. That's, that's no way. You never heard about something like that? And it's not common. Nobody going to believe that. Well, what are you talking about? It's, it's, it, it's not, it never happened. That doesn't happen. That doesn't work that way. Who are you in my dream to tell me this? There, there is no... Like, sometimes we read this so quickly, we don't stop to thinking about a man that is trying to do what's right. And now the angel came to him with an, with an explanation. There is no explanation whatsoever. That makes no sense. Not in the dark times and not today. Even today. It makes no sense. And he says, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your own wife because what's conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Listen, Joseph, you cannot, if it was on today's days, you cannot give him your, your last name and you cannot even choose his name. He's not going to be Joseph. He will be from his name will be Jesus. He's going to be called Jesus. And that's not the name that he had for sure planned for his child, for his first child. And this was not what his plan as having a child. So, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him to the name Jesus. And now he said, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, you, you, hallelujah, I agree. For today, day, for today's days. I agree. I, I feel the same. Hallelujah. Amen? He will save his people from their own sins. But you're talking to Jewish people that they thought they had no sins. They said, what, what are you talking about? We are sons of Abraham. We, are ch we, we have no sins. We did nothing wrong. We are the chosen people. What, what, Joseph, what Joseph got from this message is this. Remember what I said last week that Mary said, well, wrong door. I have no man. I'm sure this is for, for a neighbor. I think Joseph thought the same. What? This may, you're right. I know about Mary. But I'm about actually to leave because it's better for her if I just disappear. And, and plus, I have nothing to do with that pregnancy. What you're saying makes no sense. And a savior? No, we need somebody to, to take us and, and free them, free us from the Roman Empire. Not from sins. We are the elect ones. We are God's people. We are the chosen ones. We are sons of Abraham. Remember down. Remember later when Jesus was performing so many miracles and was questioned. One of the things that he said was that they they said to Jesus was that we are who are you talking. We have no sins. We are uh, childs of uh, Abraham. That's not for us. Now Joseph receives this message. And then the angel said, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The vision will be, with, will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So the angel said on Joseph's dream, this is a fulfillment of a prophecy. And he told him the prophecy, remind him of the prophecy. And the prophecy was actually about a virgin with a child and then he said he will be called Emmanuel which is God with us Joseph woke up from the dream he got his plan that he gave all figured out that I'm going to leave it in secret it's better for her I don't want to expose her to the disgrace and I say he got his plan because he was an honor man the Bible says not because he was a coward but he had a plan that looked right to him and he got his plan and he put his plan in the trash and now he's going to do what is the opposite of what makes sense. Because the angel told him, an angel from the Lord with a message from God, told him to do different. And that's what he did. The Bible says, and when Joseph woke up, he did not 
he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to, and took Mary home as his wife. Whoa! And it is so much different when we go verse by verse than when we read the whole thing, right? When we just read and, and, and go away. It's so different. He was not, he, he had a plan, a good plan. No, he was not, he not, did not have a plan to sin. He never thought about, I'm going to kill Mary. Because what she did. No, that was not, that was not the point here. He never, did, he never said that. He looked to the situation and he said, you know what, I'm going to do what's right. If I walk away, if I disappear, I'm not going to expose her to public disgrace. That's what I'm using the, the, the exactly terms that is in the Bible in front of you. He goes, like, I'm not going to expose her to public disgrace. I'm just going to walk away. And everything will be kind of fine. And, and that's it. And now the angel came and said, listen, don't do that. Let's, do, let's take the hard road. Let, let's do the, the opposite. You know what's best? It's not your plan. Your plan is actually no good. As it looks good, but it's not good. I'm going to give you the plan that the Lord has. You go take that, that woman as your wife. And he was like, but everybody will know because she's pregnant already. She's not my wife yet. She will be. I'm just engaged. Now everybody's going to know. He said, but that's what you have to do. And that's what he did. And he took him, and, and it, the baby born, and he called him Jesus. He didn't call him Joseph. He said, okay, angel, I'm going to do this. I, I'll, I'll take everything you said, but I'm going to call that baby Joseph. Because I'm Joseph. At least let me have that. He said, no, it's, 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 it's Jesus. It's Jesus. And he did. It, it is uh, um, it, it, it's a, a kind of obedience that God expects from all of us. On such a level that it's it's hard to understand. He had no clearly understanding of what was happening, but he followed everything that the God had for him to say. How do we apply this text to our lives and why this is important? Why this is not just a Christmas story? Now, a lot of times we, we look to those things as, as a Christmas stories. It's, it's like, a, like, a, like a beautiful thing to tell on Christmas. And, and just go. And, and we move very quick. We tend to do that. We read the Bible. I don't know if you have that. Um, as, uh, we, we read the Bible in a year in this church. At least we, we recommend to read the, the whole Bible in one year and go back. And a lot of times we read very quick, right? Because we've got a, uh, so much. But what this text actually represents and what this text brings to our life is what we have to, to, to know. What this text has to do with you. What, why we have this text in the Bible and how you apply it to your life on your daily decisions. We make a lot of decisions every time, all the time. You decide what clothes to wear today. You decide what you have as a breakfast. You make a lot of decisions. What those things has to do and how we apply to our life this. And let me tell you this much. The first thing that we have to understand, it's whatever plan we have. And it does, I'm not talking about bad plans. I'm not, not talking about plans to sin. A lot of plans that we have and a lot of plans that we think and we do has nothing to do with what God wants us to do. Plans that look right to the eyes of society. Plans that look right to you. Plans that you, you think, you're like, I'm going to do this way because that's the best. It may not be God's plans. Especially on a society that we live that takes what's right for wrong and wrong for right. And we look to something and we say, like, you know what, this is the right thing to do. And it may look right to you. And may not even be in a clear scene, but a lot of them are. I grew up uh, 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 hear, uh, hearing all the time, when we were playing on, 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 on the streets, and if there is an apple tree nearby, and if you're starving, and you grab an apple from your neighbor's yard, it's not a sin, because you're starving. And I learned this, and this is how we play back in my, in, in my country. And you go out, and you see uh, the neighbor has a, a tree, full of apples, the apples falling on the floor, on the ground. If you grab one and you th throw it to somebody, that's a sin. But if you eat it, that's fine. Because you're starving. Yeah, it's not bad. Huh? It's just a tree. There's so many. And let me tell you, that's a sin. Because the Bible says, do not steal. And you're like, oh, but, well, come on, that's, that's, that's not stealing. Of course it is. You're taking something that's not yours. One of the first sins that everybody commits is lying. 
The kids lie all the time. And we adults, if we don't watch out, we will lie all the time. That's the first lie, right? What's, what is the first lie? You have kids in the room, they remember. And he, the older ones will remember that too. Who did this? Wasn't me. It's so, I, I remember a, a t-shirt that my kids used to have to say, clearly it says, wasn't me. So they were ready, right? Would not even have to, to, to do something, they were already ready. Wasn't me. That's a lie. I said, no, no, that's not exactly a lie. That's, that's a, no. That's a way to get out. No, that's a lie. And then we grow up and we, 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 we mask the truth and find excuses to don't say exactly what happened, exactly the truth. Like trying to confuse things and thoughts to deceive people. Let me tell you, that's also lying. That falls on being deceiving, which was the deceiver, the sa Satan. That's the sin. We deceive on, a, on the IRS, on our taxes. If the police stops you because you're over the speed limit, you come up with an emergency. You know what? You have no idea what just happened. It depends on the level of liar that you are. You may even kill a, a, a family there, a family member right there. My, I don't know who just died. To get away from something. Well, it's, you know, it's okay because it's, you know, it doesn't going to make a difference. And I just uh, I'll save some points on my driver license, and I don't want to pay that ticket, right? Because it came up with a story. Or maybe half true. You know the half true? We got that all the time, right? What happened? You late, why? There was a lot of traffic. Where? Southbound. Where are you going? Northbound. So there was no traffic for you, wasn't Or oh, two cars on the road, two cars. Just bump and what on the side of the road and you pass 50 miles an hour. I was about to say 90, but I want to make it a Christian. You were 50 miles an hour passing by and you get to the, to the job late and because you woke up late and you tell the boss, you know what happened? It was an accident on the, on the road. Yes, it was an accident, but it was not because of that that you were late. That's lying. That's been deceiving. That's come up with a plan that looks no arm. But it's actually a sin against God. Why? Because God is true. He doesn't take lies. He doesn't take what's wrong. And these are things that are so close to us. Decisions that we make that are not what God has for us to do. And things like, like almost like Joseph. Well... It looks right to me if I do this way. I didn't harm anyone. And it looks what's right. So I'm going to do it my way. But what the, what the Bible says, no, don't do that. Don't lie. Don't steal. You know, right? You go somewhere and it says, cash is one price. If you want a receipt, it will be another price. And you go like, well, I'm going to do cash. They say, somebody's stealing on the taxes. Oh, it's not me. That's his problem. How come it's not your problem? You know we're part of it. So many, it's so, I'm just showing you that it's very close. Because sometimes we think sin is like, well, if I kill somebody, and some people are a little more tough, and say, if I kill somebody and get caught, then I have a problem. But it's not. No. Sin is doing something that God's word doesn't tell, tells you to do different. Or the, the other thing is that sometimes we don't think that the Bible tells us to do things that we do not, that we don't do. Because a lot of things that we do are a sin, but a lot of things that we don't do, because we don't do some others, are a sin. Like worshiping the Lord, like going and celebrating Christmas, for example. Not Christmas as a, a party or, or a celebration, but as the birth of Christ. Do what's right. Pray, read the Bible. Those are things that are, 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 are commands in the scriptures. So sinning is not something, a lot of times we look at sin like something that is too far from me. It's like, it's so, that is a lot of people, bad people. Like, I'm not a bad people. I'm not a bad person. 
If I'm sure, if I ask each one of you afterwards when we go eat, and I ask each one of you, are you a good person? You're going to tell me a good story about yourself. You're not going to tell me you're a bad person. No, you're a good person. You think you are a good person. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says when we again, sin against God, we means be, that happens because we are not good people. We're not good. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need Jesus to come. That's why Jesus came. And the, the Bible says, He came, and, and that's what the angel told, told Joseph, He came to save His people from their own sins. That was something they did not understand, understood but back in the days, that Jesus was the Savior from sins. He came to save people from their own sins. We're all sinners in this room. There is no one here that says, I've never sinned. Because if you say that, you are already a sinner. You're just life. We all sin and we fall short from God's glory. Everyone. There's no excuses. We all need to put away and put apart and put on aside our plans like Joseph did. He said, no, you know, you know what? I have my plan. It looks right to my own eyes. I'm sure you made decisions in your life. They were against God. We all did. I did. Multiple. We all did. We all are on the same boat. Nobody here is better than anyone. You made decisions on your own that are sins against God and they look right to you. And maybe one day you're going to read the scripture and say, like, wow, that was wrong. I did that. And you go like, well, what are the consequences of that sin? They, they, they look good to me. If I lie here and there, so I told, well, let's go back to the example on the traffic and the, and the accident on the side of the road that has nothing to do with you and you go, we were already late. You ever happened to you to be late to work and you go like, I wish there was something on the road that I can justify why I'm late? And maybe you see two cars and say, well, that, that's my excuse. So the boss came, he's all upset, and you go like, you know what, I'm sorry, just before you start speaking, please, listen, listen. There was an accident. And you go, like, okay. And you go like, woof. Oh, that was from the Lord. Oh, amen. Thank you, Jesus. What? What are you doing? No, that was not from the Lord. No, 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 thank you, Jesus, for that. What he did was wrong. He was just like, oh, but, but, Pastor, you're not understanding. The boss was getting very mad with me because it's the third time this week. So don't go late. Wake up earlier. But we find easy excuses and we justify our own sins. May God have mercy. What do we have to do so, you say? What should I do? Understand this thing. It's cold this morning. It's, a, it's sunshine, but it's cold. Everybody agree it's cold? It's cold? But it's a beautiful sunshine, isn't it? You want a, this, sunshine, this sunshine with at least 60 degrees, right? Go outside and change it. Who wants to go there and change it? Just go there. It's, it's got to be a thermostat somewhere. Not that one, brother, that doesn't work outside. But it, I'm sure it got to be somewhere, right? Somebody got to control this thing. Just go there and change it. Can you change that? No. Do you have control on your own life? No. You think you have, but you don't. Are you a sinner? Yes, you are. Am I a sinner? Yes, I am. What do I have to do? What can I do? Please understand that the Bible says the wages of sin is death. There is a condemnation from the Lord over sinners. And every sinner deserves hell. And you know that thing that we say sometimes, which is actually something that we shouldn't say ever? I had a hell over there. You have no idea what you're saying. You don't know what that is. You don't know what that is. Never say that again. Please, ever, ever. Don't, don't say ever again. Ever. You don't know what hell is. Don't compare the flat tire that you had or even the death of someone with a hell of a day. A day in hell under God's wrath is the worst thing you can ever imagine. You have no idea what it is. Be punished by God because you sin against Him? You have no idea. You have no idea. I have no idea. Nobody knows what it is until He gets there. 
And that's what you deserve because you sin against God, because you follow your own thoughts, your own things, your own rules. What happened in the Garden of Eden was that God said, do not eat from this tree, but Adam said, you know what, I have a different plan. What about if I do it? God said, do this way, but I said, you know what, I have a different plan. Maybe I know better. Maybe my plan works better. And everybody puts the guilt on, on, on the serpent. God, God created Adam. He knew his rules. He knew what to do. He knew he was the creator. We know he's the creator. We can even change the weather. Not even the temperature. There is a God. There is a creator. And he has a set of rules Amen. for us to live on this world. And this right here. Amen. This is God's word. I didn't come up with this. We have to obey it. We have to follow it. We need, and the Bible says that we need a Savior. And the birth of that Savior is what we're celebrating on this month. Especially next Lord's Day. We are celebrating the birth of Christ. The one that came to die for sinners. Because sinners could not die from their own. Because they will not save them. They were already dead in transgressions and sins. You don't kill a dead person. How you kill a dead person? They were dead. We were dead in transgressions and sins. You cannot kill a dead person. So the one that is alive, that is from God, came to die in the place of those sinners. And everyone that believes in Him can have eternal life. This is the gospel. Joseph, you know more than what Joseph knew on that day. Do you understand that? We know more. We know about eternal life. We know we resurrect from the dead. The only thing that Joseph learned from the angel, he was he will be the savior of their own sins. But Joseph did not, did not have a full understanding of sins. As you have. At least you have it from today on. From this message on. You know. Now you know. And, and Joseph followed what the angel said. He get his plan and put it in the trash. And now he's going to, going to follow God's plan. This is the call for you and me in this morning. Put your plan in the trash. Your ideas, toss them. Your thoughts about righteousness, put it out. You don't need them. They no good. Your opinion doesn't matter. Whatever you know, it no, is no use. You need a Savior. You need the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ to tell you what to live. After, because after all this, is this world. It's not even your world. The life that you have is not yours. You will take it away when you want. This week I lost an uncle. There was time that God said, that's it. He's not going to live no more. Did I want him to die? No. Of course not. God decided that. He's the Lord. Can I ask him, why Lord? Why you didn't tell me a week ago? Why I couldn't be prepared? I, I have no power, no authority. My life belongs to Him too. So we have to focus on His word, His commandments, and say, whatever I think I know, it's no good. I have to follow God's commandments. I need to repent for my sins. I need to walk away from my sins. I need to deny myself. There was a big example of denial. He denied his thoughts. Even they were right. And we have a lot of thoughts that are not right. His thoughts was right. He, was, he, was, he had a, a good plan to the human eyes. He was not, in a, not even sinning against God. The Bible never says Joseph's was, uh, thoughts was sin, it was sin, sinful. No. But it was not God's plan. We spend too much time arguing and thinking how, how we're going to turn things around with God. We, have a, we, we live on, on, on a society... That even when they talk about God, we have so many theologians today, they start arguing things and try to, to convince people by thoughts and, and making, making things and ideas. L listen to me. That's important. To a point. You know what's more important? Obedience. Why you have to explain God's plans? Why you have to understand more than what we already have? Why you need more than scriptures? The Bible says, do not steal. Don't steal. He said, oh, well, do not steal, comma, 
just in no it doesn't say with an exception of no it doesn't say do not lie stop lying that's it he says to don't do so many other things that we just tend to do oh no but you're not understanding you know what the thing that I heard more as a pastor for, for, for the years that I'm a pastor when I'm going to talk to somebody and the person walks away with the idea that I did not understood what she told me no it's not it's not there he's, he, he, no he's not seeing my point of view well I never ask you to see my point of view because my point of view doesn't matter we're not discussing what's right and what, what we think is right and what we think is wrong. We're talking about what God said. So a lot of the times I read things in the scripture that I do not like. Do you understand that? Please, understand. It's like, uh, and for you that are visiting here, the first day you're like, oh come, the pastor does not like. Well, the Bible says, love your enemies. I don't like that one. Do you? I don't. Love your enemies. Can I pretend? No, he says love. Can I just go live on a different place so I don't have to deal with them? No, that's not what the Bible says. It says to love them. Love your enemies. You say like, oh, I, I love that text. No, I don't. Every time I look to the text that says love your enemies, I have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy on me and change my heart. Because I want to kill my enemies. And don't, don't pretend you want to love them. But the thing is, either I do God's will, or I do my plan. So I go and I say, and the first thing that I have to say is, Lord have mercy, I don't, I can't. Please work on me. Have your Holy Spirit dwelling on me and changing me on such a way that I'm going to be able not only to deal with my enemies, but even love them. And don't tell me you don't have enemies. And don't, have, don't tell me you don't struggle with the love of enemies. It doesn't matter for how many years you are a Christian. You know it's tough. Walk in holiness. Really? God is, is asking a sinful person with a sinful nature to walk in a holiness? Uh, we, we take this very lightly, right? Because we think walking in holiness is coming to the house of the Lord on the, on, the, on, the, on the Lord's Day in the morning. No, that's not what it is. It's walk in holiness. It means you go, you go to your, your, your work, you go to your neighborhood, and everybody can see that you live in holiness. The way you speak, the way you walk, the way, how you conduct yourself, that is living in holiness. Can I do that? No. What I have to do? I cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Work on me because I want to obey your commandment. I don't find an excuse. You know what people say? Oh, God knows. I hear that a lot too. God knows we are humans. Yes, He you knows you're human. That's why He didn't send a human to save you. He sent His own son. Because He knows He's a human. You don't have to remind Him. We find that an excuse to sin. You know? Oh Lord, you know. Because sometimes our repentance is pretty much like this. Oh Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. That was, not, you know, like, was my sinful nature, so it's not actually my fault, right? No, 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 my friends. That's, that's not what it is. We crawl out to the Lord and we say, Lord, it's my fault. I let, I was let by my sinful nature mine sinful nature ah it's my fault I'm guilty before you forgive me grant me repentance repentance on such a way that I will, I will never do it again that I will, I will rather die than do that again that's repentance repentance is not no let's put it again on traffic Repentance is not when the lights and the siren of the police is in the back of your car. You repent so quickly, don't you? You go 80 miles an hour, it says 60, you hear the, the, the police in the back of you, you repent. You pull over immediately. Good night, officer. I was over the speed limit. Oh, I didn't even notice. I will never do it again. Liar. As soon as he goes away, you're going to do 90 because now you're 10 minutes late. 
That's not repentance. A lot of times we do that before the Lord. It goes wrong. Our plan goes wrong. So say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will never do it again. And then again and again and again, we keep doing the same thing. That's not repentance. Repentance is when your heart is so broken for because you sin against God. Not because you get caught. It's because you offend the Almighty God and His holiness. And you feel so terrible for your sin that you say, Lord, I'd rather die than repeat this. That's, rep that's repentance. That's repentance. That's what God, God is calling us to repent like that. And say, I will obey you from now on. I don't, don't, I don't need to understand. I need to obey. As I said before, and to conclude the message, what I heard the most in my life as a pastor was that, like, oh, he's not understanding. I'm saying this, this and that, and he's not seeing my position, not seeing my view. And I, again, I don't care about what you think. I don't care about what your thoughts are. I don't care about what my thoughts or my opinions are. I will never tell you my opinion. I'm going to tell you what God is telling you. And that's what the scriptures is. So it's not that I don't love you or I don't care about you. I care more about God. And as much as more, care, more I have more care for God than God's word, I will care more for you. Because that's what you need. It's God's word. To be taught, to be preached, to be, to be brought to your life. On the matters that you don't like. Oh, I don't like that, Pastor. I don't like what the pastor said. I got that all the time. I got that all the time. But it's about what God wants you to hear this morning. I don't even knew that a lot of you will be here today. There's a lot of you that I don't even know, never met before. I don't know if I will see you again. Maybe after this message, you don't want to see my face again. But I want to tell you this. This is the Savior that you need. This is Christmas. He is Jesus. He is the Lord. And even you believe in Him. Oh, you are going to hell. And I care about that. And I'm concerned about that. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to Him. Cry out to Him until He saves you. Until the Holy Spirit dwells on you. That grants you repentance. That you will walk away from sin. And you will have the best Christmas ever. You will be celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing Him. And having Him dwelling in your heart. This is the message of the Gospel. I'm so happy that you're here this morning. I'm happy for the church members first, of course. But I'm so happy for all these visitors that came this morning. They could hear this message. And I want to wish you, all of you, a merry, merry Christmas. But it will be no merry Christmas if Jesus is not your Savior. It will be a Christmas, okay. A merry, merry Christmas is a Christmas of someone that has Jesus on his heart. I'll be praying for each one of you. And during the time that we're going to be here, the fellowship, the whole time, the celebration of Nisi's birthday, if you want to talk to me about it, or any church member, he can tell you more about the gospel. And you are very welcome here all the time to hear God's word. I will have time to talk to you afterwards or any time. My phone number is all over the place. Emails, you have flyers there. I'm sure our brother will give you a flyer, uh, Chris, at the door when you leave. Please contact me anytime. I want to pray with you. I want to tell you more about the gospel. I want to talk to you about Christ. He is the Savior. And you need Him. I need Him. He changed my life. He make me. He, he make me born again. Born for Him. And that's what I want for you. Let me pray. Let's pray together. Could you please stand and pray with me? Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And as this day, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of preaching the gospel. Father, I do not deserve to preach. It's a higher thing that I cannot bear. It. But by your grace and mercy, I'm thankful. And I'm thankful for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, for everyone, that are the ones that are here, may you be the center. I ask you, Lord, for salvation. I ask you, Lord, to dwell in these lives. And may we celebrate you. Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord. I want to worship you with my heart, my soul, with all the ones that are here. May your name be glorified in heaven. May this Christmas be for our church and, and for, 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 for this nation. 
the reminder of Christ, that Christ Jesus came, that the God is with us, that the Emmanuel came, and not just a matter of buying gifts or food or anything else. Father, may your name be glorified in heaven, as may your name be glorified in, on earth as he is in heaven forever. Amen. May God bless.